unscripted video time. Woohoo! These, they're not I eat it hundreds. In fact, these are some of the headphones. Ah! Headphones, I mean IEMs that I have made recently. Yeah, I've been teasing you with the um that quad driver hybrid, but unfortunately I did a big Papega thing and then I really fucked it up really actually. I I, I, I broke one of the balanced armatures and Yep, I'm waiting for the replacement to come. So while that is happening, let's talk you through these. The not IE eight hundreds. They are not perfect. Definitely. Um, let's just say um, I made three currently, but they all have their little problems. Most notably, the driver matching. But before let's go into that, before we're going into that, let's do a general review of these. I mean, what's not to love? Reviewing your own stuff. <laughs> you get some No, I'm going to be harsh about them. So, I'm not going to tell you how much I made them for, but let's talk about the sound. First of all, the sound, man, it's surprising. I actually bought a 5.8mm um, uh, diameter um, dynamic driver, but, well, it performed a little bit better than I imagined. The 5mm diameter to driver it fits it it's a little bit too small for this case so I sort of have to improvise a little bit but that's for later wow that sucks <laughs> let's talk about the sound then the sound of these <laughs> these are weirdly satisfying sound I, I don't understand not very hi-fi but these are weirdly satisfying uh, so let's start with the bass the base of this thing, well, this is, you know, V-shaped. This driver had a V-shaped sound, and I tried to negate a little bit of it by letting out a little bit of that bass. With, like, I basically put a very, very low profile um, grate on the back. Like, a very, very low intensity grate on the back, so it leaks out as much bass as possible, but still. This thing have about 5 decibel of bass bump. Uh, I'll probably show like maybe an image right now it shows about a five millimeter bass bump which actually though um in reality is actually quite fun comparing to some of the other iems because five decibel definitely i can deal with that it's totally still fun and the bass quality eh, it's eh, it's a little bit not woofy it's a little bit you know bouncy which is not in a good way. It's bouncy in the sense that the bass sort of digs down and then comes back up slowly. It's a lot slower in speed comparing to some of the bigger stuff that, you know, I'm used to. Well, the bass is a little bit bouncy, but, well, it's still there and it's not, a little, it's not too much. It's still tastefully tuned and I do enjoy that bass. So let's then move on to the mids. The mids, I still haven't told you the price yet, but it's magical. It's like the kind of mids that you sort of imagined from something that is, you know, way above its price range. I still haven't told you the price range yet. I'm probably a little bit stupid for not doing that, but I want to hold off the big reveal for later. Anyway, the mid, it feels just really nice and wide that's unheard of to be honest the mids i really like the focused mids but this mids is a little bit more wide and a little bit more out there which creates that really good sense of a uh, spaciousness within the iem that i actually never heard before in anything to be honest even my ie8s have trouble reaching the soundstage of these and that's quite a lot for the mids. The mids detail, very good. The timbre, it's very good. It's much better than the 
the Mounds Armature Timbre, which is a little bit too crisp and a little bit too plasticky. This timbre is full while still being fast. The mids, oh man, da, da, definitely a highlight of these. And then we can talk about the highs. The highs for these, well, they do exist, but they do lack a little bit in the toppest of top ends, if you know what I mean. Basically, the parts above 10K, but I don't have a, I don't have a fucking electrostatic, so that's to be expected. And more about like the detail on the top end, it's another shift of tone because I'm really used to the Harmon tune, IEMs, and this, I wouldn't say it's too far off, but this is definitely not Harmon tune. It is like maybe three decibels off for the peak on maybe the from 3K up. But it is enough for me to feel the sparkle sometimes. From time to time, you can just feel that, you know, when the cymbal crashes in, you can feel it's there. You can hear it. It's clear. And you will just sort of, you know, imagine if it's three decibel louder, it's going to be annoying. <laughs> it's going to get a little bit spiky, which that's what I like about these. Okay, so here's the waterfall diagram if you're just wondering about, like, the stuff I've been talking about. Um, like, you, if you don't really understand it, this is the frequency axis which you probably know is from 220k because below 200 we don't have enough data for it and over here is the time like the since like basically the burst from the top end of the frequency and then an attenuation from 0 to 2.46 milliseconds and as we can see here that's what I was talking about with the bouncy bass the attenuation it's a little bit too much it's still have a negative 15 decibel even all the way at 2.46 milliseconds that's what i was talking about a little bit too much bass and it's a little bit of a linear decrease i would much rather to have like a maybe a big boop and then like a, have a little bit of attenuation is okay but i don't want that much honking bass in that like sh that time period that's what i was talking about a bounciness that's sort of not desirable and then over here we have a weird 2k bump over 0.49 seconds, but it's all within one millisecond, which is okay. And then we have the rest, which is totally just normal. We have a big ringing at 8k, but that's to be expected for basically any IEMs. And we have a hump and a ringing at 3k as well, where which is really, really, you know, to be expected and normal. And we can see sort of right here, there's not much beyond 10 and 20k. Yeah, that was all talking about like lacking a top end. But not much IEMs actually have frequencies around here because that will require like uh, electrostatic and ain't nobody got time for that or money for that actually. So that's about it for the cumulative spectral delay for this pair. Really nice. And maybe it's about time for me to talk about a price because I've been holding it like there's some sort of a magic thing. Um, the driver themselves. Um, how much are they cost? How much do they cost? Um, ten dollars per driver? No. Five dollars? No. Seventy cents. One driver. It's for seventy cents. That is really good price for what you're hearing because I feel like if I can do, well, I'm going to talk about a build quality. If I can get a build quality right, this is a serious contender for the T2, I feel like. This can seriously be a T2 eater, a 10 T2 eater. I, I'm, not, I'm not joking. And then, it, yeah... So the entire for the entire build, the case is the most expensive part. You can see those i800Ks. Well, these are quite expensive. While well, I mean quite expensive in the relative of the earphone, it's four dollars. And the cable was like you know one and a half, two dollars. These are 
actually 70 cents. This one I have a microphone on it, so it's a one and a half dollars. Entirety makeup. Uh, you know, when you add it up, it's just a little bit like six and a half dollars for me to make these, which is a, a what the fuck kind of price. <laughs> you really, you really start wondering, wow. They do make a lot of money on these, don't they? <laughs> and now we have the build quality to talk about because that's the very big letdown of this uh, thing when I say it isn't flawless. Let's talk about a driver, first of all, because, first of all, the driver, I got it for such a low price, they don't offer matching. So I have to match it myself. And it, that didn't really do very good because I can very um, clearly hear the sound difference between these two. Like the two sides. It can, there's like a two decibel difference. After I measured them when I put them, put them in case, there's two decibel differences. And also for each driver I successfully soldered on... For every driver I soldered on successfully, there's about two of them broken. <laughs> they did send in some extra for backup, but these are the kill count, or dead count, because some of them are broken the way they are. Some of them just don't have sub base. Some of them don't have solder pads on them. Some of them don't even have a PCB on the back. <laughs> I don't understand how... You know, this, these are probably not QC passed, so that's why they're having so many problems. Uh, these are probably not very good quality and consistency, so that's why um, there are sound differences between left and right ear, which is annoying. And that's the case for these two. I don't understand why, but this one got lucky and didn't have any sound differences between the two buds. And for this pair... There's even something worse. Um, the driver I soldered in, it was fine. It was totally fine. Until it wasn't. <laughs> I started to put it in, put it in, and then it just created that crackle noise. And you get, you know, when you put on some really cheap airline earphones, you get a crackle. This thing, one of the side have that. And then when you do that, the sound just goes totally off. You have to jiggle it about, jiggle it about, and then you pull it out a little bit. Oh. I think it's back in normal, and now it produces regular sound. That is very annoying. <laughs> you know, when you want to just have some, as, you know, at the end of the day, you just sort of want to have some hassle-free IEM. And I feel like I want to make them. I want to make th myself the hassle-free IEM that I wanted to make, but these are not hassle-free. These are a little annoying. Whenever I hear the sound difference between left and right butt, uh, that's annoying. Whenever there is like the crack, 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 crack that's annoying. And that's probably why they have a factory and have a bunch of workers doing the matching, doing the assembly. And about the assembly, I am an ape. The solder point on these, when you see it, when you see them, you probably want to cry because of how ugly they are. Uh, is the sound difference because of that? No, I don't think so. The solder point actually, it's so negligible in difference. The sound difference, I don't think it makes any difference. And in general, I just have to say, these are a little bit of a letdown because they have potential to be so good, but I personally, on my own, I cannot make them good because I don't have the matching, I don't have the patience, I don't have the build like the craftsmanship I'm just letting these drivers down these driver have potential I'm not gonna tell you where I bought them though because that's just the same as you know lifting Queen Elizabeth's underwear and see what color she's wearing that's weird oh actually let's just, let's just say uh, it's like you know telling the working of a magic trick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's skip. Let's get sick with that, and let's skip that lifting the skirt of Queen of Love. Yeah, that. Let's skip that. Anyway, I'm not gonna tell you where I bought these, but they, you, you can search for them. They're literally everywhere <laughs> on Taobao. You just have to figure out a way get to get them to your place. 
Anyway, so that's basically my first experience with making my own IEMs. Not a perfectly fruitful one, but I did learn quite a lot and said quite a lot of fucks because the soldering is annoying. Let, let me show you uh, the example of the annoying soldering. You see this driver? The, the little legs on the side, I, I just ignored them. And you see those two copper pads? Solder don't stick to that. But I have to figure out a way to make solder stick to that. That's annoying. <laughs> That's so goddamn annoying. But what I have to do, I have to do. And yep. That's how I made three IEMs first, like for myself. I mean, I don't need, I don't have three pair of ears, but I don't really have, you know, the thing to do a giveaway. Otherwise, I would very much be happy to give away these for you guys, but nah, I don't know how to do that. Uh, anyway, that's sort of my first experience for making IEMs. That quad quad driver IEM it is coming but slowly <laughs> I'm still figuring out the tune and mm, there's a driver coming soon it, it was a Sanyan 26 UA I broke that thing it, that's pretty rare apparently I cannot find it anywhere except for you know from China I have to air it airship it over here gonna be at least another two weeks before it comes because there's quite a lot more to come as well kind of annoying but kind of to be expected when you're doing these kind of stuff anyway without any further ado let's end the video today i didn't really script any of this you can tell bye bye